We've been talking about, um, I guess it turned into a mini-series about you must be born again to get into the kingdom of God. And today we'll f- uh, finish and some things I had on my heart still, and then we'll shift next week. So let me uh, just give you a quick summary so that we can get right where we need to be and advance further along this thought. And uh, Malachi 1.6 is our theme scripture for the whole year. The words God is speaking here, he says, isn't it true that a son honors his father? In a, in a perfect world it is. And a worker, his master or supervisor, and this is what God said, you know what, if I'm your father, where's my honor? Where's the honor? And if I'm your master, your supervisor, where's the respect? Honor and respect can be seen in how you receive the word of the person that's in front of you. If you honor them, you're going to really hear them. If you honor them, you're going to take their advice and do uh, what they said. As a matter of fact, there's a litmus test of how you can know that you love God. Jesus said, if you love me, you will fulfill my word. You'll walk in my word. So our love for God goes to the extent as we apply the word of God in our life. But honoring God is the view that his word, say his word, now God's word, right? His word, it's the only instructional source to live life at its best. Our opinion or ways that are different than God's word will lead us into a substandard life. So one of the best things you can do for your life, I can do for my life, is to make sure God's word is the greatest voice in my life. Acts 17.10 says, The Berean Jews were more honorable than those in Thessalonica, and this was evident. How is it evident that they are more honorable? Well, because in great eagerness, they accepted God's word. Because they honored him. They loved him. With eagerness, they accepted the word. But what else did they do? They examined the scriptures each day. They examined the scriptures every Sunday. They examined the scriptures every, every day. Every day to see whether these teachings were true. And the truth gauge is the word of God. So without getting into detail, I just want to let you know, and I want to really get this down in our heart, that anything you see out there in the world, no matter what they're saying, you need to judge it according to the Word of God. And, and, and you know, when I examine certain things they're trying to push on us in the world, and I examine the Scriptures, that's not so. This is so. So it, it's just simple But we're talking about now today, we're going to honor God's word as it pertains to you must be born again. John 3, 1 through 8 says, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. He was a ruler of the Jews, and this man came to Jesus by night, and he said, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher come from God because no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. And Jesus answered and said to him, You know, uh, Nicodemus was coming with an encouraging word to Jesus, but Jesus goes after his heart. And he said to him, most assuredly, Nicodemus, I say to you, unless one is born again, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, and naturally speaking, we've probably done the same thing, or even maybe you're doing that today. How can a man be born when he's old? Well, that's not what Jesus is talking about. Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? We all know that is, no, you can't. And Jesus answered, most assuredly, I say to you, second time, unless one is born of water and unless one is born of the Spirit, he cannot enter the uh, the kingdom of God. Now, verse 7 says, don't marvel that I said to you third time, 
you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound. You don't, you don't see the wind, but you can hear the sound. So you know the results of the wind. And uh, you can't tell when it comes or where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. When someone receives Jesus, as we'll find out later, you don't become a whole new person in your flesh. That which is born of the flesh is your flesh. You can't get that reborn. But God said, but your spirit, that which is born of the spirit is your spirit. That which is born again is your spirit. So you can't tell again where, uh, who's born again spiritually like the wind. Unless you, when, when you stand side by side, there's some people in here today that might, you might be guests. I don't know you and I don't know if you're a Christian or not. I can't tell that by you just being physically present. But now I can tell if I, um, you know, and you can tell me as well, as we, as we see people's lives, uh, they begin to produce certain fruit. Those who are born again are going to bear good fruit. Galatians chapter 5 talks about how people that are born again receive the life and nature of God, and the fruit of the Spirit is placed on the inside of them. And, and then, yet at the same time, it talks about uh, walking in the flesh or walking in the Spirit. You can be a Christian, you can be born again, but if we don't study these Scriptures every day to see if things, were, things are so, our body can lead us back into all the addictions and all the stuff, you know, all the stuff that we are set free from. We can be a carnal Christian. But thank God, we can study the Scripture daily, whether these things are so, and we can walk in love and joy and peace and patience and long-suffering and gentleness and meekness, all these types of things that was challenging your flesh this week when you were at uh, Walmart and and, and waiting in line. Or you're in Walmart, and you're like, how many know you go to these big old places, and you're, you're wondering, where's somebody to help me? Where, it, hey, is anybody around here working here? I need some help. And uh, so anyway, that might have tested a little bit of your fruit of patience. Yeah, didn't you feel it grow too right there in that moment? You're like, oh. So anyway, um, Genesis 1.27 goes on to say, God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created male and female. He created them. Now, we know that if, if God created us in his image, then if we can find out what God is, that, that's, that's what we are because we are created in his image. John 4.24 gives us the answer. God is a spirit. God is a spirit. God is a spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. We are a spirit. We have a soul, mind, will, and emotions. And we live in this body, which allows us to be here on this earth. It's like our home we live in. The spirit lives in the home of the body. Um, we're getting ready to um, do a funeral here in, in a week or so. And uh, we're, we're going to commit that person's body, earth to earth, Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. That, that body will be brought back down to dust. But the spirit, when they passed away, came up out of that body and went into the presence of the Lord because that person was saved. And they were born again. And death for a Christian, I mean, this might sound a little bit different for you today, but Christians have done all the dying we will ever do. The dying that we face is we, we breathe our last breath on earth and we go right into the presence of God. Now, if someone doesn't know Jesus, that's not, that's their future of eternity is not, not good. There is a heaven again. There is a hell to shun. Hell, if, if I had to describe what hell is, just imagine a place where it's void of God and everything is opposite to God. Whereas we, we have peace with God, there is fear and torment and gnashing of the teeth the Scriptures talk about, that place. We don't want to go to that place. God never created that place for you to go anyway. God never sends anybody to hell. If, it's, it's a matter of what we do with our knowledge of what we're receiving today 
in the name of Jesus. What are we going to do with Jesus? That's the question. In Genesis 3, Satan dishonored the Word of God. And because Adam didn't exercise his authority over his thought life, Satan got into his head. Thoughts, wrong thoughts, got into his head. And we're supposed to do something with wrong thoughts, as we'll see. So he dishonored, Adam dishonored the Word of God by believing a lie from Satan. And 2 Corinthians 10, 3 says, We live in this world, but we don't fight our battles in the same way the world does. The weapons we use are not human ones. Our weapons have power from God and can destroy the enemy's strong places, talking about the mind and the soul. We destroy people's arguments, and we tear down every proud idea that raises itself against the knowledge of God, against God's Word. We also capture every thought and make it give up and obey Christ. Our answer to every lie is God's Word, which is truth. So we see that man rebelled against God by rejecting His Word. That's dishonorable. He faced the consequences of dying spiritually and as a result, physically. We, we saw earlier in Genesis, we, we studied that, that God said, don't eat from this tree, this one particular tree, or else you're going to die. Well, as we can see, Adam didn't cast down the lies and the negativity was coming at his mind, trying to get him out of the will of God and trying to get him away from the Word of God. And guess what he did? Adam and Eve ate of the fruit, and they died. You must be born again. They died. You must be born again. They died. You must be born again. Their spirit died the moment they disobeyed God. Spiritual death is nothing more than being separated from God. You're no longer in fellowship with God. You, you have a fallen nature now on the inside, your spirit. But God said you would die after you eat of the fruit. They died, not outwardly. They died in their spirit. Come on, are you getting this? We got to be born again, not just forgiven. Thank God for forgiveness. But we need to become a whole new person. And you become a whole new person when you're born again. Oh, let's not take lightly what God says. It's the matter of spending heaven, uh, eternity in heaven or eternity in hell. When Adam sinned, he caused all of mankind born after him to miss the mark because we are born in a fallen flesh nature. Our spirit's alive unto God, but when sin revived, I died. At the age of accountability, I knew it was wrong, and I did it anyway. All of us, we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. So therefore, guess what? Our spirit died. Now you've got a dead spirit in a wrong nature, and you're living in a negative world. We must be born again. We've got to be born again. Romans 5.12 says, you know the story of how Adam landed us in the dilemma we're in. First sin, then death, and no one exempt from either sin or death. Then sin disturbed relations with God in everything and in every, everyone, but the extent of the disturbance was not clear until God spelled it out in the Word in, to Moses. So death, this huge abyss separating us from God dominated the landscape from Adam to Moses. Even those who didn't sin precisely as Adam did by disobeying a specific command of God still had to experience this termination of life, this separation from God. But Adam, who got us into this, also points us ahead to the one who will get us out of this. 
Yet the rescuing gift is not exactly parallel to the death-dealing sin. If one man's sin put crowds of people at the dead-end abyss of separation from God, just think of what God's gift poured through one man, Jesus Christ, will do. There is no comparison between the death-dealing sin and the generous life-giving gift. Now do you see, you must be born again. Once a man sins, they are in a place, and God's in another place. There's separation from God. Jesus is the only way back to God. Don't take his word lightly. God said you must be born again once. You must be going born again twice. You must be born again three times. I can give you other scripture, but before, for time's sake, there's other scriptures that talk about those of you born again. Those of you born again. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For our sake God made Jesus virtually to be sin, who knew no sin, who knew no sin, so that in and through Him we might become endued with, viewed as being in, and examples of the righteousness of God, what we ought to, ought to be, approved and accepted and right relationship with Him By his goodness. Why could Jesus bring spiritual life to us? Because he didn't sin, so therefore he was alive in his spirit. And because he was alive in his spirit and he died on our behalf, he took the separation we had because he took on our sin and he gave us the spiritual life that he had. Wow. The great exchange. When Jesus died, he didn't die for himself. When Jesus died, he died for us in our place, vicariously, as our our replacement or as our substitute. Wow. Thank you, Jesus, huh? Billy Graham said, well, Billy Graham said, I need to take a drink of water. I love the word, don't you? Billy Graham said, Jesus alone can offer eternal life because he is the only one who lives sinless and provided the perfect sacrifice for our sins by his death on the cross. He lived on earth as a man but was also divine. You remember the moment, too, where, where, where um, uh, the passion of Christ, the crucifixion, all that kind of stuff, and, and you hear Jesus saying, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because he was taken on our sin, and God had to turn his back on his son, who, who always has been with him, so that we, so that we could be reconciled to God and filled with new life again. You must be born again. I must be born again. We must be born again. Because Jesus without sin, he could die for hours in our place. Three days after his death, God raised Jesus from the dead. He's the only one ever to die and come back to life. Then he ascended into heaven. While the, while the founders of various non-Christian religions of the world have died and been buried, they have never been raised from the dead. Christ has been, and Jesus is alive. And Jesus is the Savior of the world. And Jesus is just waiting for you to accept him. We must be born again. Jesus was the only one to, be, to claim to be God And the only one that proved it. In his words, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Matter of fact, no one comes to the Father except through me. Because when you receive receive Jesus, you receive new life. You receive uh, 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 reconciliation. You you receive a, a whole new spirit. Because you're now born again. Fresh life, new life. Because the Bible is, God, is the inspired word of God, and God cannot lie, the scripture says. It does not contradict itself or teach falsehoods. It is in this very scripture that Jesus revealed. 
You know, many Christians have the mistaken belief that eternal life begins when they die. Not so. But that it, it, it's not biblically accurate. Eternal life begins when we are born again into the kingdom of God. Whosoever, John 3.36 says, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, has eternal life, has eternal life. So why do, we, why do we have to be born again? Because mankind can't stand in the presence of God since his nature's wrong and we're separated from God. Why? Because man died spiritually, separated from God, and a void exists that only God can fill. And you know that's true because all the stuff we tried to fill in God's place never satisfied us. Sin, the Word says, is pleasurable for a season. But when that season's up, you're like, oh, It's impossible to fellowship with God when you're spiritually dead or separated from God. Man needs life from God. Man needs to be born again. You must be born again. You must be born again. You must be born again. That's what Jesus said. Don't ever forget that. John 5, 26. For as the Father hath life in himself, so he hath given the Son to have life in himself. The new birth is absolutely necessary to being saved. It's more than forgiveness. Thank God for forgiveness. But when you receive Jesus, you become a brand new person, a brand new life. 2 Corinthians 5.17. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, If any person is engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he, and what is man, a spirit, he is a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old previous moral and spiritual condition has been passed away. Behold, the fresh and the new has come. But all things are from God, who through Jesus Christ reconciled us to himself, received us into favor again, brought us into harmony with himself and God, and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Man, one of our, our mission is love God, love people, live with purpose. Our, our, the way we, we advance that vision, we reach people in our world. They must be born again. Let me just give you some statistics in a moment. <coughs> Excuse me. Through the new birth, you receive the life and nature of God and come into right relationship with God. What it means being born again, the new birth. I didn't even read the scripture all the way, did I? We become a new creation. Oh, no, I did. And we need to become ministers of reconciliation, of sharing what God has done for us, just sharing our story or inviting people. And here we'll help, help people come. That by word and deed, we might aim to bring others into harmony with God. The new birth, what does it really mean? The inward person, not the outward person. Now, if you want to know what the outward person is, uh, touch the shoulder of that person next to you. I don't know if you're going to do that, but and, and you, might, you might do it with someone. And now, pinch them real hard, real hard. Well, that's the voice of your outward person. You've been wanting to do that all morning, eh? All right. So, um, the inward person gets born again. The inward man, the, the hidden man of the heart, the Scripture says, the inward man, our spirit, not the outward man, is made new. For the person who experiences this, it is day one. It is day one because their past is gone because they died in Christ. And God raised them from the dead, us from the dead. When we receive Jesus, we start over because we're new creations in Christ. Some people will come to this church if you're, part, if you're a consistent person that comes to this church, but a friend might come in and still think you're that old person. But you're a totally different person than they knew. Now you have memories of what you might have done with them, but now guess what you do? You start living a fruitful life of proving that you are the wind. Excuse me, you're not the wind. But you know what I'm saying? The wind, you can't tell if it's here except for there's evidence. You don't know someone's a Christian just because they say they are. 
We need to see some evidence. I don't know how many percentage wise quote that, oh, I'm a Christian out there. They just quote, I'm a Christian. You know, their life is, 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 is a bowl of cr- kraut. You know what that is? Sauerkraut. I don't even know what, the, ooh. Do you like sauerkraut? Help me like sauerkraut. All right. Huh? Okay. God bless you. <laughs> now, now, I'm going to just say this because I'm going to be nice. Make sure if you had sauerkraut for breakfast, please share mints. All right. The outward man is not saved, it's the inward man. The body is not new, but the inner person is new. The slate is wiped clean, and God views the person as brand new because they've just been born again. You have a natural birth date. Now when you receive Jesus, you have a spiritual birth date. And everything that was in your past up until you have a spiritual new birthday is totally gone. As far as the east is from the west, without the shedding of blood, there would be no remission of sins. That word remission means wiped out as though it never existed. You must be born again. Don't receive a new body when we're born again. The Bible says we're going to have a new body someday, but we don't have it now. And that's, that's some of the challenge of people that get saved because their body didn't get reborn. Their spirit did with the life or nature of God. And all they want to do good and right is so on the inside of them. But if they don't begin to renew their mind and we don't renew our mind and study the Scriptures daily to see if these things are so... We, we, we can incarcerate our new spirit man and walk in the flesh and, and we don't have the proper fruit and evidence to convict us as a Christian. As your devotion, write it down. Galatians chapter 5, read it today. Two different ways we can walk. 2 Corinthians 4.16 says, Therefore we, we don't lose heart even though our out man's going to perish going to go back to dust. Come on now. We're not going to lose heart. Ed Cobra went to heaven. Only his outward man perished, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. That inward man is alive. That inward man is filled with eternal life, going into the presence of God immediately. 1 Peter 1.23 says, for you have been born again. Another, another scripture that confirms that out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every truth be established. For you have been born again, but not to a life that will quickly end. Your new life will last forever because it comes from the eternal living Word of God. And Dad Hagen, Kenneth E. Hagen said it like this, the new birth is not, everybody say not. Get ready to describe what it's. It's not church membership, it's not confirmation, it's not water baptism, it's not taking the sacraments, it's not observing religious duties, it's not uh, intellectual reception of Christianity, it's not orthodoxy of faith, or going to church, saying prayers, reading the Bible, being moral, and doing good deeds, being cultured or refined. You must be born again. You can't get good enough to get God. You get God and he makes you good enough. The righteousness of God in Christ. Nicodemus had most of these qualities outwardly. and said, Nicodemus, let me pause you right now. You must be born again. You got to be born again, Nicodemus. You got to be born again. A thief on the cross didn't have any of these things. But one thief, thief rejected him and one accepted him. In Luke 23, 43, Jesus said... Assuredly, I say to you today, you're going to be with me in paradise. Their bodies are getting ready to shut down. But their spirit, one of the, the that individual that received Jesus became spiritually alive. Once Jesus was raised from the dead. Doing your best. 
Millions of people are trusting in these things I just said. You know, most Christians are confused about salvation. You know, the result of a survey indicated that most Protestant Christians don't understand or believe their own theology about salvation. The Barna Research Company uh, interviewed people nationwide, and this was what he asked. They asked the company, can a good person earn their way to heaven? The percentage of those responding yes was this. Assemblies of God, 22% believe if you're just good enough, you'll get into heaven. 38% Baptists believe that. 52% Presbyterian believe that. Uh, 54% Lutheran believe that. The Episcopalian, 58% believe that. Methodist, 59% believe that. And Roman Catholic Church, 82% believe that you have to earn your way to heaven. You must be born again. You had nothing to do with that. But receiving Jesus, letting him do a supernatural eternal work. True Christianity differs from all other religions on the face of the earth in, 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 in one very specific way. You know, we are the only religion with the Savior Jesus Christ, others teach there is a God and that we are ac uh, accountable to Him, but they believe we save ourselves by good works. Even the Jews and Muslims believe God is the God of Abraham, but reject Jesus as Savior and Lord. You know what? I, I just thank God for a refreshing, renewed spirit of the fear of the Lord. You don't know who's saved and who's not. But you can see by evidence, and you can see by the Word. The whole world, including us, before we received Jesus, had a heart problem, had a spirit problem, had a wrong nature problem, separated from God problem. Listen, you can, you can have a beautifully colored coating of wax on a rotten apple, and you'll bite right into decay. You can look like you got something going outwardly. That's why we need to be, not judge people, but we need to be good fruit inspectors. Whose fruit do you inspect first? Well, yours, of course. <laughs> no, mine. <laughs> Individually, we do inspect our own. The new birth is a rebirth of our human spirit. Jeremiah 13 says in 23, can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots? Man can't change his own nature, but God can. Praise God. Being born again means that the inward person not the outward person is made new for the person who experiences this. It's day one. If, if I can only start over, we say, you know, if I only could do a redo on my life, get born again. So many people are in different wrong lifestyles because their spirit's dead, their flesh has no check, and they don't even know how to cast down imaginations, wrong thoughts from their mind. So why do we see so much evil? Why do we see th so much in the world that is contrary to the Word of God? Because just like we, we gotta, we've got to be born again. There was a London businessman called Lindsay uh, Clegg, and he told this story about a warehouse property he was selling. The building had been empty for months and needed repairs. Vandals had damaged the doors, smashed the windows, strewn trash all over the place, and as he showed a prospective buyer the property, Clegg, uh, the guy took pains to say that he would replace the broken windows, bring a crew to correct any structural damage, and clean out all the garbage. And the guy who was looking to buy it said, listen, forget about all the repairs. He said, when I get this place, I'm going to build something completely different. I, I don't want the building, I want the site. He's going to build something completely brand new, never existed before. Compared with the renovation 
God has in mind. Our efforts to improve our lives are as trivial as sweeping a warehouse slated for the wrecking ball. When we become God's property or God's kids, the old life, it's over. He makes all things new. And he wants the sight. And he needs permission from us to build on it. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you for your word today. Father, we praise you for the word today. Thank you. Thank you. We've studied the scriptures today, and boy, we're going to be so well equipped to go into this fallen world. So many people try to blame everything negative in the world on you, God, and that is just totally opposite. It's because we live in a fallen world. Negative things, bad things happen. Father, but I thank you. You have delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us in the kingdom of your son when we are born again. We thank you that that your angels encamp around about us. We don't have to fear like the world fears. We thank you you've given us power over that negative, the negative stuff in the world. You've given us the ability to manage our thought life. And it all starts with being born again. Let's have a really, really private moment here. You here today and you say, you know what, I thought I was saved, but I did all those things that was sort of working my way into heaven. You know, those things could be good. But are you born again? Are you born again? We pray a prayer right now with those of you who are not sure or you absolutely know that you're not born again. If that's you, private moment between me and you lift up your hands because I'm getting ready to pray for everybody in this room today are you born again thank you are you born again difference between heaven and hell I'm not trying to scare you I'm just trying to say that most of people and even the church world thinks doing good gives us the right to be in heaven I want us all to pray this prayer out loud together yep that, that's all of us in this building whether you raised your hand or not If you should have raised your hand, pray this prayer deeply in your heart. Say this with me. God, I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe He died on the cross for my sin because He lived sinless. He paid my death penalty. But I also believe once that justice was paid for, You raised him from the dead. Jesus, I know you're alive. I know you're the Savior of the world. But I also know that I have to receive you. Jesus, I receive you with all my heart. I mean business with you. And Jesus, now that I have received you, I thank you that you're my Savior. Jesus, you're my Lord. Thank you that everything I've done in my past is totally wiped clean because I am born again and I am brand new.